So I'm hoping this will act as a bit of an introduction or a beginner's guide to calories. What they are, where they come from, where they go inside of that body, and then perhaps what you can do with this information. To start, we're gonna look at what a calorie is. A calorie is a unit of measurement. Much like a meter is a unit of measurement for distance, a calorie is a measurement of the amount of energy a substance is able to give out. The energy output of the calorie is typically in the form of heat, but this can also take the form of sound or, in the case of that body, movement. Scientifically speaking, one calorie is the amount of energy required to heat one gram of water one degree Celsius at sea level. However, considering that a calorie is actually a very, very small amount of energy, if we were to use that alone in food and nutrition, we'd be dealing with maths with the tens and hundreds of thousands. So what we do instead is we use the phrase kilo calorie or kilocalorie, as you might have heard. Now kilo is thousand of something. Just like when we're talking about meters in distance, we have kilo meters or kilometers, where one kilometer, one kilometer, equals 1,000 meters. There are 1,000 calories in one kilo calorie. Now, for ease of understanding, for the rest of this video, I'm going to be using the word calories instead of kilo calories. But whenever I say it, I really mean the multiple of 1,000. So we know what a calorie is, but where do they come from? Well, it may surprise you to learn that calories aren't just found in foods. They're in any substance that has the ability to heat one gram of water by one degree at sea level. This is because calorie is just a unit of measurement. It's not something actually physically found in a food. There are other forms of measuring energy output, such as joules, but we don't use that in the food industry because that's not what's normally done. Just like in other contexts, such as horse racing, furlongs are used as distances, whereas in human racing, we use meters. Now, for a moment, I want you to think of food as being a 3D puzzle or jigsaw, which requires different blocks or building pieces to be put together to create a shape of some sort. Now, those blocks, those building pieces, those are our molecules of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. The 3D puzzle, well, there's only three different types or three main types that you need to know about for food and calories. And that's a carbohydrate puzzle, that's a protein puzzle, and a fat puzzle. At no point would you add a calorie to the puzzle, but the calorie exists between the pieces. It's the attraction, it's the bond, this invisible bond that holds pieces together. If you wanted to access that energy, then you would need to break it apart. Just like you could break down a puzzle, and if you were to snap it up, you'd be able to hear something, you'd be able to see the difference, you might be able to feel the vibrations in your hands. The same goes in our body. When we break down these molecules of carbon, hydrogen, nutrient, oxygen, we release the energy that was once holding it together into the surrounding area. It can then be picked up by other parts of our body and converted and transformed and reused into something else, such as heat, sound, and movement energy. So by frequently consuming these three different types of jigsaws, proteins, fats, and carbohydrates, our body is able to break any of them down, separating these molecules, releasing the energy that's held within the bonds, and then we can repurpose that energy elsewhere around our body. But not all jigsaws are created equal. Some contain more energy than others. And in the case of proteins, fats, and carbohydrates, fats are the ones that contain the most calories per 100 grams. So if you were to take a pile of fat, a pile of protein, a pile of carbohydrate, each pile weighing 100 grams, within the fat pile, there would be 900 calories worth of energy. In the other two, proteins and carbohydrates, there would be 400 calories. Now, if you're a normal person, you don't eat raw fat, carbohydrate, and protein. The majority of foods are a complex blend, a mash-up puzzle containing all three of the nutrients in varying ratios. Luckily though, the food industry have done all of the hard part for you. They've worked out those ratios, the splits, they've done the testing, and they've surmised it all into one neat number that they put onto the packaging under the KCAL sign. 
So we know how calories enter our body, through food, proteins, carbohydrates, fats, and they might enter in slightly different quantities based on the ratio of those three nutrients and how much energy is in those bonds. Now, where do these calories go? We can categorize calorie use into four main areas. The first is our BMR, our basal metabolic rate. This is the calorie conversion that supports the vitality and function of bodily systems and organs that we require to stay alive. It's the base level. In order to release this energy, however, there need to be other systems in place to do this breakdown and conversion of food. This is known as the thermal effect of food. So depending on the quantity and the type of food you eat, you're going to require energy to fuel the systems that break down the food that you need to break down to release the energy. Beyond our BMR and the thermal effect of food calorie requirements, we then have a broader category of activity thermogenesis. This is the muscular system's demand for calories to carry out contractions. Within activity thermogenesis, we've got two different things. We've got the non-intentional exercise and we have the intentional exercise. We're gonna start with the non-intentional, AKA the NEAT, non-intentional exercise activity thermogenesis. This rate of calorie consumption is the culmination of all of the small movements that a person might complete throughout the day, from standing up to sitting down, to reaching into a cupboard to doing the washing up. Intentional exercise activity thermogenesis, however, is from planned activity and is classified as EAT, E-A-T, exercise activity thermogenesis. Typically, EAT calorie consumption comes in bouts of 30 to 60 minutes. It is planned exercise, often more strenuous than our NEAT activity because it might involve sport. So across those four areas, our BMR, thermal effect of food, our non-intentional and intentional exercise, we would arrive at our total daily energy expenditure, or our TDEE. So what can you actually do with this information about TDEE? Well, I've explained a principle before called energy balance, wherein lies two sides to the same equation, inputs and outputs. The output side of that equation is your TDEE, comprising of your NEAT, your EAT, your thermal effects of food, and your BMR. The input side of that equation are the calories that you consume. Now, due to the laws of thermodynamics and energy conservation, in a closed system, such as the body, energy can't be created or destroyed. It can only ever be transformed from one form into another. So should energy input ever exceed energy output in a closed system, there'd be a gradual accumulation of that surplus energy. It's not going to magically disappear. In the context of our body, if our TDEE, our output, does not meet the energy input, calories consumed, then we're going to store that surplus energy as body fat. But the reverse is also true. If our TDEE, our energy output, doesn't meet our energy input, our calorie consumption, then we not only can't store any surplus calories because there are none, there's now in fact a deficit. So to meet our output demands, we have to draw on previously stored energy. And in the vast majority of cases, that excess energy can be drawn from excess body fat. And finally, how can you apply all of this to you? Well, first off, you need to know your numbers. Know each side of that energy balance equation. Know your inputs and know your outputs. From this position of understanding, you can know if you're in or out of energy balance or close to balanced. Then, of course, you can adapt according to your own personal goals. Your inputs, you can track with a fair degree of accuracy using calorie counters such as MyFitnessPal. There's loads of them out there, so I suggest you do a little bit of research around the ones that you can use on a day-to-day -day basis easily. After a week or two of meticulous counting, you'll be able to get an estimate of what you consume in calories on a week-to-week -week basis. Energy output is a little bit harder to measure, 
but there are BMR estimators out there. I'll leave some links below. You're also able to track your eat and meat levels using activity bands found in most smartwatches or perhaps a Whoop band, perhaps a Fitbit. There's plenty out there. Obviously, the more money you spend, you're probably going to get a more accurate reading. But again, they are still just estimations. And that's that. If you want to tweak either side, then you'll be able to tweak your energy balance. If you've made it this far, thank you very much. It means a lot that you'd stick around for a seven or eight minute YouTube video, but I really do hope that you got something from it. If you did, then perhaps leave a like or maybe even subscribe to the channel. It can help it grow and help get these videos out to more people. If similar content is of interest to you, then do check out some of these other videos, which I'll leave around me here. With that being said, I hope to see you again in the next one.